Jeffrey Breslow had a job most people only dreamed of. He invented toys and games for a living, including classics like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, uh, Polly Pockets. He was inducted into the Toy Industry Hall of Fame in 1998. But his life is not without tragedy. He helped hold his company together after a workplace tragedy. His book is called uh, A Game Maker's Life. A Hall of Fame game inventor and executive tells the inside story of the toy industry. Jeffrey Breslow joins us this morning. Thanks for being Good here. Good morning. Hey. I'm delighted to be here with you. Thank Gosh, you. So I, aside from the fact that you, you yourself invented like some of these just out of your brain, when you were there, all these iconic toys, you had a hand in. Simon, the Evil Knievel motorcycle guy, yes. all of these. All, all of those, all yes. All of these. How, does, how do you get involved? That's like a dream job. Well, I never grew up, number one. That's yeah. the first recommendation, to be a toy designer. But I, yeah, I struggled in high school, I struggled in college until I transferred to the University of Illinois and met my mentor. And that was where my toy experience began. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about Rock'em Sock'em Robots. <laughs> How did you come up with this idea? Well, That's that a was classic. The, that, that was actually there before I started. Oh, okay. I mean, it, it's a very old toy, and one of my partners, uh, Bert Meyer, did that uh, a long, long time ago. And you designed. I remember the, the commercial. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> classic. You yes. designed the board game Masterpiece. Yes. I, that sounds like if you describe that and you are pitching that, it sounds ridiculous. Kids are going to pretend they're buying artwork in an auction. It, it, it was really fun. But it was huge, yeah. it, Yes, I, I went to the Art Institute and bought yeah. postcards, uh, 50 postcards, and then I had attached to them the value. So every game, the value of the painting was different. And there were two that were worth a million dollars at the time and two forgeries. And the fun of the game is you you bought a forgery from somebody and you had to keep a straight face because you're trying to bid it and get somebody else to buy it. It gotcha. was actually a very successful game for I Parker Brothers. I know it was. It's yeah. just odd. I can't imagine being in that pitch meeting, right? Uh, yeah. it, was, it was fun. Actually. Yeah. Where do you get your ideas from? Well, a lot of it comes from being at the studio, seeing things. We have bins of parts and toys and taking things apart. Nothing happens in the middle of the night. It really is a process. And it's also because we have clients coming in on a regular basis. And I believe that pressure fuels creativity. Let's talk about Ants in the Pants. I, that is, what, that's a 50-year-old game. 50-year-old How game. did you come up with that one? It, it was the saying first. We have yeah, we have it right here. <laughs> okay. No, we do, yeah. It, it was the saying that led to the game. Yeah. I, I had a whole list of things like that, bird in the hand and all sorts of things, and I would make yeah. those. And then I'd look at the list and say, oh, Ants in the Pants, I kind of like that, how it sounds. And that so, was the beginning of so it. Just when anyone who works at a toy company, if you come up with this idea, are you personally still getting residuals for these games, or is that all for the company? You no, know? no, the, the company gets the residuals. Yeah. And, and ultimately, Marvin made partners of the young people like myself yeah. who were coming up with ideas. It's no different than a law firm. If you have a law firm and you're bringing business, they make yeah. you a partner. I see. So Marvin was very smart about that, and he recognized early on myself and my other partners and, and I didn't even have to ask him. He gave me a percentage of the That's business. Great. And I ended up running the business after Marvin was gone. Let's talk about, I know you didn't invent this one, but it came from the same place, a Simon. That was huge. And it was sort of a, a transition. It was a, a pivotal a toy. Without question. It was in the mid-70s. My partner, Howard Morrison, came up with the idea. Uh, he was into electronics. And he actually came into my office and said, grab a pencil. And he hit something. I hit it, the glass, a plate. He says, there's a new chip that's coming out, I think we can use that to make sounds and generate it. And it was Howard Morrison, uh, who was one of the greatest toy designers there ever was. I did games, my other partner did dolls. Howard did games, toys, ride-ons, plush, vehicles. Mm -hmm. He was just extraordinary. Before we let you go, we did touch on it in your intro, but there, I mean, it's hard to believe that something so tragic could happen at a, at a toy company, but uh, one of the first workplace shootings happened and you were it was in your building. Talk oh, about no, that. You was, touch on it in your book, yeah. in your well, office. It was, it was a guy who worked for us for seven yeah. years. Quiet guy, electrical engineer. Nobody had any idea. And he came to the office one day, expected to see you know, nine partners in the main office. Uh, I just stepped out for a phone call, and my two partners were in there, and both of those got killed. He killed oh. another girl and ended up shooting himself at the same time. So it was... You know, it happened in a place of fun and joy for people. It was a struggle to get back up and running. But we had 70 employees. We were sponsoring with families a couple hundred people. 
and it was a successful business, so we had to keep going, and it was wow. difficult. To and get you talk started. about that and recovering with PTSD and everything in your book. Yes. Ah, oh. well, it's a fascinating story, Thank Jeffrey. You. You're going to be talking about this and everything you created at the uh, is it the Epiphany Center for the Arts on Ashland? Yes, actually, it's on this Saturday. Everybody's invited. Yeah. It's 201 South Ashland. There's free parking, uh, book signing, games music, a little bit of everything. Well, thank you so much for being Thanks, with Jeffrey. us. Thanks, Jeffrey. GameMakersLife.com is where you can find out more. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Delighted to be here.